His fall was as fast as his rise. Sam Bankman Freed, out of nowhere, became a cryptocurrency billionaire in his 20s. He was a boy genius with a mop of curly black hair. He slept on a beanbag chair instead of in a normal bed. He seemed to represent the new generation of wealth. He was so smart that he could play video games while on important calls with investors. He was influential in Congress, donating vast sums to politicians and advocating for legislation. Throw out everything you thought you knew about banking and finance because the new man in charge doesn't even wear long pants. Well, now he's facing years, possibly decades in jail, and it all happened at lightning speed. His firm collapsed on November 11th, 2022. On November 2nd, 2023, he was convicted of seven counts of fraud. On today's Plain English, and also on Thursday, we'll talk about this stunning story. Hi there, everyone. I'm Jeff, and this is Lesson 628 of Plain English. You can find the full lesson transcript at plainenglish.com slash 628. Here at Plain English, we help you upgrade your skills in English with stories about current events. And the trial of Sam Bankman Freed was a big one. Now, a lot of you are not into crypto, you're not into finance, you're bored by banking, you're not into technology and things like that. Well, that's fine. This is a human story. You might not understand all the crypto words, all the finance words. You don't need to. This is a fascinating story, and I'll try to make it understandable even if you're not into this stuff. In the second half of today's lesson, I'll show you how to use the English expression pay off, and we have a quote of the week. Well, let's dive deeper into the story of Sam Bankman Freed. Sam Bankman Freed started his professional career at Jane Street Capital, a well known hedge fund. Jane Street specializes in high volume trading in the financial markets, and there, Bankman Freed's talents were rewarded. He could search the markets for bets that would pay off for Jane Street. He was good at his job, but he was an insufferable coworker. He looked for ways to outsmart the other traders, and when he found one, he made sure to humiliate his coworkers as publicly and as ruthlessly as possible. Even in the cutthroat world of financial trading, this was unusual, his former colleagues said. Bankman Freed followed a philosophy called effective altruism. The philosophy says this, if you really want to do good in the world, your obligation is not to volunteer at an animal shelter or advocate for human rights. Instead, your obligation is to make as much money as you possibly can and then give it away to benefit humanity. Bankman Freed wasn't a true believer in cryptocurrencies at least not at the beginning. 
He only got into crypto because it matched his skill set, it was popular, and he saw that he could make a ton of money. So he left Jane Street to start his own firm and to take advantage of an opportunity in crypto. Here's the opportunity he spotted, and it was a good one. Years ago, cryptocurrencies were trading at different prices in different countries, but a crypto coin is a digital asset. So in Asia, a coin might be one price. In America, that same coin would be another price. Anytime that happens, especially with a digital asset, there's an opportunity to make money on the price difference. You buy the thing where the price is low, you sell it where the price is high, you pocket the difference. The word for that is arbitrage. And Bankman Freed, through his new firm, did that over and over and over in high volumes, buying here and selling there for just a little bit more every time. And that's how he started to make a lot of money from cryptocurrencies. He and his colleagues would stay up all night and all day searching for the exact right time and place to buy and the exact right time and place to sell in this 24-hour global market. Now, as much money as Alameda, that was his trading firm, as much money as Alameda was making, Bankman Freed spotted an even better opportunity. Back in those days, I'm only talking about like four years ago, but in those days, the world of crypto trading was dodgy. I mean, it still is. But Bankman Freed, as a crypto trader, recognized that the world needed something. It needed an exchange, like an online marketplace, where people could buy and sell crypto assets without worrying that their money would disappear. Grown-up people who cared about things like security, financial statements, legal protections, they needed a place where they could feel safe trading crypto because they weren't feeling safe with the options that they then had. So Bankman Freed created FTX, a platform where customers could buy and sell derivatives related to cryptocurrencies. FTX was a separate business from Alameda where he was doing his own trades. FTX was a neutral platform. They were sitting in the middle of two people making a trade with each other, taking a small commission on every one. And Bankman Freed positioned FTX as the responsible neutral trading platform, the place where your money would be safe. But as we later discovered, this was far from the truth. Even as Bankman Freed told the world that FTX was the safest place to trade, FTX didn't have the protections he said it had. It didn't have the protections that other trading platforms 
in traditional finance have. So customers were depositing their money, thinking that FTX had the necessary controls, procedures, structures, and protections in place when really it did not. And that would lead to FTX's and to Sam Bankman Freed's spectacular downfall, as you'll hear on Thursday. All right, it's not just Monday, it's Cyber Monday, and that means it is the end of a nice long weekend of holiday sales, and it's no different here at Plain English. When you are listening to this, assuming you're listening today, Monday, I'll be welcoming a lot of new members into Plain English Plus, all of whom joined over the weekend with our Black Friday and Cyber Monday special. And those end today. They end today, Monday, November 27th. So wherever you are, just take a minute and go to plainenglish.com where you'll see the special sales for this Black Friday Cyber Monday. They are on the homepage and they are only good until midnight tonight, Monday, November 27th. And just as a reminder, that means half off your first six months as a member of Plain English Plus, which is where we do our best work. So if you like listening, then you'll love being a member. Everything in the membership is just like what you get here in the podcast, only better and more. And now it's more affordable than ever to get started. So check out plainenglish.com before midnight Chicago time tonight. So get that done. It's Monday, so here's a quote for you this week. If you're always trying to be normal, you will never know how amazing you can be. And that is by Maya Angelou, the poet. I certainly agree with that. If you're always trying to be normal, you will never know how amazing you can be. Pay off is an expression, a phrasal verb, that has a few different meanings. Today, I'm going to show you just one of those meanings. And in today's context, it means to achieve success or a positive result. Now, it has the word pay in it, so you might automatically be thinking money. And that's not wrong, but it's not the full story. When we use pay off, we've invested something. It can be money, but it can also be effort, time, things like that. When we use pay off, the subject, the thing doing the action, that's the investment. That's the thing we spend hoping to get a result. So let's say you own a business that prints t-shirts and you want to buy a new machine that can print higher quality designs on the shirts. You want this investment to pay off. That means you want to achieve a result from this investment, from this new machine. What would that be? In a business, it probably means you want to win more customers, charge higher prices, make more money than the machine costs. You make an investment, 
You want it to pay off. You want to enjoy the rewards, the success, the positive result from that investment. So fast forward a few months, you're now making better t-shirts and charging more money for them. The investment has paid off. Now let's talk about time. Let's say you're, I don't know, learning a second or third language. And let's say you have a big vacation coming up to Australia and you spend lots of time on some online platform. I can't think of one off the top of my head. Some online platform getting better at English expressions and vocabulary. This is the investment. It's not money. It's time and effort, but you still want to get a benefit. So now imagine you go to Australia and it's a huge success. You walk around the streets confidently, knowing you can express your best ideas. And it's all because of the time and effort that you put into upgrading your English. That effort paid off. That effort generated a positive result for you. All right, so we're ready to see how you heard it in today's lesson. Sam Bankman Fried worked at a hedge fund called Jane Street Capital. And Jane Street is a kind of investment firm that does lots and lots of very complicated transactions. They don't necessarily make a lot of money individually, but they do a lot of them and they add up. They use sophisticated trading programs to be able to do lots and lots of trades in a day, making money on each one. Well, Sam Bankman Freed got his start there, and his job there was to search the financial markets for trades that would pay off. His job, in other words, was to look for opportunities that would be profitable for his employer. Do you guys get the warranties or the service plans when you buy a new phone? I don't. I don't drop my phone. I think I've only dropped a phone and shattered its screen twice in my life. I certainly remember doing it once. It might have happened twice. And I'm old. I don't accidentally jump in the water with my phone. I mean, sure, stuff has happened, but in general, I just don't think that, for me, the service plan would pay off. If you want coverage from Apple that includes damage, theft, and loss, that costs $249 for two years. Now, that's a quarter of the cost of a new phone. And if something ever happens, you still have to pay $149 just to claim the benefit. So just thinking about how much the service plan costs and thinking about my life and my lifestyle, I just don't think that service plan would pay off. I don't think the service plan would give me a benefit, at least not for me. I know some people that drop their phones all the time. I know some people who scratch their screens. I know some people who lose stuff, who accidentally might jump into a swimming pool with their phones and not realize it. Now, if that sounds like you, and no judgments, but if that sounds like you, then the service plan might pay off. You might really benefit from that protection. 
Now, speaking of things that will definitely pay off, our Cyber Monday sale ends tonight at midnight Chicago time. So make sure to get on plainenglish.com. Just do it now. Plainenglish.com. Sign up for a plus membership. It's half off for your first six months. And that will definitely pay off. Think about it. Half off. Your first six months are going to be less than $10 per month. And you can join three live practice conversation calls per month. They last an hour, and that's in addition to everything else you get. So this is definitely going to pay off, especially if improving your English is one of your priorities going into 2024. So think about what 2024 is going to mean. If English is going to be a part of your life in 2024, then this is the best way to get started. It's easy. I'm going to show you exactly what to do and how to make the most progress. PlainEnglish.com. Just go there right now. You'll see all the details right there on the top of the page. Get that done before midnight and we will see you back here on Thursday.